Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you my latest project. This is a new vacuum cart that I'm building and eventually I plan to do physical vapor deposition inside there. So with a really uh, high current heater, you can evaporate materials in a vacuum and then have the materials uh, solidify on a flat surface. So my ultimate goal here is to do either optical coatings or thin film transistors or any number of other cool things. Uh, also, prepping samples for the scanning electron microscope would be another good use of this. So, let me show you how I did it. The wooden cart is just a cheap IKEA cart that I got locally. And sometimes working with wood is uh, easier than metal just because it's easier to drill and the tolerances aren't quite as tight. However, if I had a cheap source, a cheap, reliable local source of metal carts, kind of like I used for the SEM, uh, I, would, I would use those instead. The metal plate is a one inch thick piece of aluminum, which is probably overkill, but there's some benefits of using uh, a nice thick piece. Uh, the main one being that you can drill blind holes into either side, tap the holes, and then use those as uh, support points without going through the material. So if the plate were only a quarter inch thick, you really couldn't drill a blind hole because you'd be going through the other side, or you'd only be able to get you know an eighth inch of, of engagement there, which isn't quite enough. So today I machined the plate, and that involved using uh, a large bit to cut out a couple of holes. Um, let me know if you wanted me to do a, uh, like a tutorial on machining. I know I haven't done a tutorial video in a while, so let me know if that would be interesting to you guys. And then I cut a, a gland for the O-ring, which will seal the uh, diffusion pump, which is clamped onto the bottom of the, of the vacuum chamber. And in the description, I've got a link to a page that will tell you what the dimensions of the gland should be. There's actually, originally when I started making um, O-ring seals, I would make the glands way too small. And this is actually a problem because when you clamp the two pieces together, the O-ring has nowhere to squeeze into. And you actually end up with not as good of a seal as if you had a properly sized gland. So always check the chart and make sure that you're cutting the right size gland. Besides the diffusion pump, which is the thing that's actually creating the high vacuum inside the chamber, the only other thing I have connected right now is a penning gauge, which I refurbished in an earlier video. The penning gauge uh, reads from about 10 to, 10 to the negative 7 to uh, 10 to the negative 3 about uh, millibar. So the pumps have been running for about an hour total. Uh, the Roughing pump was run for about 15 or 20 minutes first, and then the diffusion pump was switched on. And after about an hour total, we're down to about 10 to the negative 5 millibar in the chamber, and the four line is about 190 millitor. I'm using the Harbor Freight 3 CFM uh, air conditioning service compressor. And there we've got the new water chiller that I showed in the previous video, uh, keeping the, the water at about mid 60 degree F range. Here's a view of the backside of the plumbing. The diffusion pump is an Edwards uh, diff stack, and the opening on the top is maybe about three and a half inches, so it's probably a four inch nominal diffusion pump. And it has an integrated water baffle, which is pretty cool, because on my last project, I had to make a water baffle to keep oil from the diffusion pump from getting back up into the chamber. If you're unfamiliar with these, they work by boiling oil in the bottom of the container and then that oil vapor rises up to the top and comes out of a jet. So the way that it actually creates vacuum is by sort of spraying the air molecules out of the chamber with this oil jet. Think of like blowing away dry leaves with like a garden hose. Uh, same basic idea, it's like a momentum transfer pump. Okay, see you next time.